Welcome to Simple Truth. I'm Bill McCaskill, and Terrence Williams is standing in for Mike King. I mean, for Mike Adams today. <laughs> and we have Sam King doing our technical uh, behind the scenes work. We want to, um, and we started last week a series in the book of James. Mm -hmm. We're going to speak through the book of James, read it, and uh, comment on it. And. Uh, Pray that God uh, blesses your heart and your life through His Word because Amen. we know that there's a lot of power in His Word and without the understanding of His Word, we're going to stay spiritual babies forever. That's right. All right, so I'm going to start in verse 9 of the first chapter. We read the first eight verses last week. And I'm just going to read uh, 9 through 11 and we're going to comment on that. But the brother of humble circumstances is to glory in his high position, and the rich man is to glory in his humiliation, because like flowering grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and its flower falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man, in the midst of his pursuits, will fade away. Well, we know the futility of trusting in, in, in riches. Um, you know, you're... <laughs> we know it, but do we live it? <laughs> and I say we, I'm speaking for American, the American culture. No. Where, where is the, the American culture on this issue? The American culture is uh, get all you can get. I mean, we, we see that um, just simply in... Black Friday is one example. Oh, um, how that. people trample each other and um, even get in altercations and things over pursuit of things. Hmm. And, and the pursuit of riches causes people to alter their morals in order to get to that place that they feel like they need to be. Yeah, really. Yeah. And it's, it is a shame. And even Christians that know the truth, that know that the almighty dollar is not almighty. That almighty God is almighty, not the almighty dollar. Right. But we live in this culture, and I believe that Christians get dragged back down under this, as it were, a spirit of competition, mm -hmm. a spirit of trying to accumulate goods and wealth as if that's going to somehow protect us. Well, you know, we live in a country that's very idolatrous. Mm. I mean, as far as who we look up to, celebrities and different people mm. like that, and they have the things that we seem to desire. And, and Christians have 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 idols as well. I mean, I mean, we we all we we all look at TV. We all are sports fans. A lot of us are sports fans, and these guys live lavish lifestyles mm -hmm. that looks very very appealing to us. And, you know, I mean, this is saying here that, you know, the, the sun, so, for no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat that it withers the grass, its flower fades, its beautiful appearance disappears, it perishes, so the rich man will fade away. Mm. Um, the rich man's wealth is tied to whoever, whatever monetary system that is. Well, what mm -hmm. happens when the monetary systems crash? Mm -hmm. What happens, you know, I think it talks about in Revelation where, where they're, you know, their gold and silver and stuff, they're... <laughs> they're, they're Burns they're, their flesh, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, they're, and they're crying out for the mountains to fall on them to Amen. keep them from he who's coming. So That's right. Um, wow. Well, we really want to challenge people today to think about what they're putting their faith in. Mm -hmm. What are they really trusting in? Um, are they trusting in money to give them life? Are they trusting in uh, um, sort of relationships, sort of like trying to build uh, this network of uh, social friends and think that mm -hmm. that's going to give them life? You know, some people think if I invite you to my party, you have to invite me to your party. If I invite you to a meal, you have to invite me to your house for a meal. And mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding is, I've never lived in these circles, but these very wealthy people, when they invite all their friends, they'll put like a $10,000 Rolex watch on the table at, at every plate, 
as a hmm. gift wow. to their guests. But then when they get invited back to the other person's house, they expect to receive in kind. That's right. Uh, you know, the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons, that he, he looks at all of us the same. Mm -hmm. He knows that all, it doesn't matter how, much, how big your bank account is. Right. That has no relationship whatsoever to spiritual vitality. Well, we know that the, the, you know, I think Jesus even said it, that the, it's, it's more difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven as, as it is would be a camel to, to go under the eye of a needle. Mm. Um, you know, I believe that wealth, as long as, it's, as long as it flows through us in order to do things for God is great. You know, I don't think God ever minds us to having things and having possessions as long as they don't have us. As long as they Amen. don't own us, Amen. and 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 if we can get that perspective and realize that money comes through to us in order to flow through us to do the things for the kingdom of God, then God won't mind us being prosperous. Amen. And the problem with prosperity in this country, which you know that that teaching in and of itself is feeding into the flesh. The fleshly, uh, the fleshly desires that men already have, which are right here to be rich and wealthy. Mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> well, that, that idea of flowing through reminds mm -hmm. me of the two uh, seas in Israel. You have the Sea of Galilee and you have the Dead Sea mm -hmm. down at the bottom of the country. And so in the Galilean Sea, the water's flowing in and the same amount is flowing out. Mm -hmm. And it's fresh, and it's full of life, and it's full of vitality. The Dead Sea, it's only coming in. So you would think it'd be getting richer and richer. And that's what people seem to think. They want the money coming in, but they mm -hmm. want it to stop and stay in my account. Mm -hmm. The problem is that as the Dead Sea, what happens is the salts and everything accumulate to the point that it becomes totally dead. Mm -hmm. No life, no fish, nothing can live in it. And that's the way it is when you make money your God and you want to acquire more and more of it. Yeah, you have to buy bigger bigger houses and yeah. live in gated communities yeah. and have, exactly. have security and exactly. all that stuff just to protect yourself from people mm. rather than being a blessing to people. Amen. Uh, well, we're definitely only stewards and not owners. Right. And the day that everybody finds out that they were a steward and not an owner is the day that they die. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter how much we have, we don't take any of it with us. No, make it I came into this That's world right. and make it I will leave. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Well, let's read a few more verses here. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one of us is tempted when we are carried away and enticed by our own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. Wow. Let's just stop there yes. again. There's, there's bringing us back around to death. Death mm -hmm. seems to have a... Uh, prominence in our in our study today. Well, and, you know, talking about money, you know, we we know the the, the verse that says the wages of sin is death. death. So you know, sin itself pays a wage. Wow. You know, sin sin has a payday, and yep. it's, it's death. Amen. So I mean, <laughs> you talk about asking the Lord for wisdom. If people could understand that one verse of Scripture, the wages of sin is death. Sin pays. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't pay a good dividend. No. Mm. Well, and the other side of that coin is the one who perseveres under trial will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. What um, about that crown of life? Hmm. Well, we know it's everlasting life. We know Amen. it's eternal life. Amen. We know that this is that we're sojourn we're sojourners here. We're mm -hmm. just pilgrims, as mm -hmm. they say, passing through. Mm -hmm. So, this world not being our home, we're living for that other kingdom exactly. that's awaiting us. And as we as we're faithful to live here, 
you know, God is waiting to reward those who diligently seek him throughout this life. Amen. And that crown of life is what we're going to be rewarded. Amen. Man. And uh, in that, also a person who hasn't put his trust in this world order, mm -hmm. hasn't put his trust in money all of his life, hasn't put his trust in his possessions, whatever they are. It's not a possession anyway, it's a stewardship. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's passing through us and we're passing through it for a time. Right. And But when we're not invested in this world, when we come to the end of this physical life, because we haven't stored up our treasures here, we've stored up our treasures in heaven, mm -hmm. we're ready to go on and to get to our real possessions. Amen. And that's something that, you know, I think that there's a little saying that I think the devil instigated, and it goes like this, a man who's so heavenly minded, he's a no earthly good. Had you ever heard that one before? Oh, yeah, I've, I've heard that one in... I actually dealt with that in a, a sermon a few months back. Yeah. You know, the, the more heavenly minded we are, the more, more earthly good earthly we good are. good we are. Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad, glad you understand. I mean, I, I think the flip side of that may be is being so super spiritual that you people can't relate to you. Yeah. And maybe right. that's what it's meant by it. But Maybe so. Maybe so. And, and, and we know Jesus was very accessible. Mm -hmm. He was he was not so heavenly minded. He, he was considered to be super spiritual, right? In fact, that was got him in trouble with the Pharisees because <laughs> right. they thought he wasn't quote spiritual enough, right? Yeah, a friend of sinners, you know. Yeah, if, right. if he if he was who he says he would, was, then he wouldn't be hanging with those. He would know people, what so. kind of woman that is that's touching him, right? Yeah. Well, I think that uh, we just have a little bit of time left, and mm -hmm. I, I think that we ought to spend some time in prayer. Amen. And um, we do that from time to time on the mm -hmm. radio, and, and perhaps you could close us out here in prayer. And, sure. And um, appreciate it. Well, Father, I thank you and I praise you uh, for this broadcast, for this time together, Lord, the teaching of your word. Father God, and I pray as we're talking tonight about... Uh, uh, wealth and we're talking about the deceitfulness of riches we're talking about temptation and the and the things of this world father god i pray for those that are out there that are being pulled to and fro mm. by this culture yes. father that they would find themselves anchored the only place that they can be anchored is in your word and in your presence so father i pray lord that they would during this uh this time lord find that anchor for their soul that would keep them from being tossed through all of the things of culture, all the things of the deceitfulness of rich, riches and the pursuit of happiness, but that we would pursue you. Mm. And I pray that they would find that in this season. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's all the time we have. But you can go to simpletruthradio.net and listen to this program again or listen to our archived programs. Amen. Thank you, Terrence.